All right, Carl Lawson. I think from the moment we've signed him, very good player. But I think Jets fans have overrated him. A player can be very good and still be overvalued by the fan base. I would argue we probably, as fans, overrate all our players a little bit, right? I know I do. But I think it's important, in order to appreciate our players, to have some more realistic and grounded expectations sometimes. And this whole offseason and last offseason, too, the Jets fans were telling me Carl Lawson was going to have this 10, 12 plus, even into the teens, sack explosion. And I'm rooting for it. He's incredibly talented. It's not impossible. But I just don't know if there's any data to suggest that Carl Lawson would ever have like a 12 or more sack season. Uh, Carl Lawson had eight and a half sacks his rookie year. Really good. Since then, obviously he's missed a lot of time with injuries, but he's played 40 games since then, and he has 12 and a half sacks across those 40 games. The season that got him paid from Cincinnati, his last season there, he played in 16 games, five and a half sacks the whole season. Now, I think that's the area we're overvaluing him is expecting the sack total because, as we know, Carl Lawson gets a lot of pressures and a lot of quarterback hits. There's value in that, of course. You make quarterbacks uncomfortable. You collapse the pocket. Quarterbacks step up. Other guys get sacks. You force uh, rush throws, turnovers, all that. Value in that. Of course there is. And so far this year, Carl Lawson, he's on pace to have six sacks and his Pass rush win rate and his pressures and his hits are going to far outpace his sacks. He's on pace to be who he's always been. A really good, not great player. And I spent the last year and a half defending, ardently defending Corey Davis from other Jets fans, freaking out, saying he was an overpay, a waste of money, all this, when he was producing at the exact clip almost that he did with his former team. Before he got hurt last year. Before he got hurt, he was producing just like he did his last couple years with the Titans. We said, we didn't pay him this much money to be a wide receiver too. Well, that's what he is. That's what he is. That's always what he's been. I can't speak to what Joe Douglas thought when we were paying him. I can only speak to the evidence that we had. And now, here's the thing with... Carl Lawson and Corey Davis, how it's similar and how their roles could shape together on the future of this team. Because now Corey Davis is starting to be appreciated by Jets fans. Obviously, the big game against Pittsburgh helped. But I think what's also is helping is that we have Elijah Moore and Garrett Wilson. And now Corey Davis is like a wide receiver two some games, maybe a wide receiver three some games. Every once in a while, we'll get a game or two where he's the best wide receiver on the field like we did in Pittsburgh. And now we feel fine about that because he's properly slotted in his role. Could you argue slightly overpaid? Maybe, but we're paying Garrett and Elijah nothing. So in totality, it's fine. The sum of the amount of money we're paying our wide receiver room is well worth the talent and the production we're going to see. I fully believe. And I think we're going to say the same thing about our defensive line pretty soon. I hope. With Carl Lawson, we didn't pay him $15 million to get six sacks. Well, I, okay. I haven't personally had a conversation with Joe Douglas on how many sacks he expected Carl Lawson to get, but the mindset could have been we have nobody who can get after the pass rusher, and here's a guy we could get, and here's what it's going to cost to get him here. You know? I bought my first house during COVID, and you couldn't buy any appliances, like nothing. I had to way overpay for everything. So we got a pretty good stove, a really good stove. And we paid great stove price for it. We said, we didn't pay this kind of... We needed dinner. We needed dinner. And the Jets needed to get after the quarterback. And that's what it costs. And now, maybe, just like Garrett Wilson and Elijah Moore are on cheap contracts for the type of production they can give. Now, Corey Davis is, doesn't have to be the hero. He's properly slotted. Carl Lawson. Quinnen Williams. He'll get the bag soon, but he hasn't yet. He's getting paid $10 million this year. And how Quinton Williams has started out this year, $10 million is an absolute bargain for him. He's going to get Defensive Player of the Year votes if the Jets can play 500 football. He is. And Jermaine Johnson, you're paying him nothing. Bryce Huff, you're paying him nothing. JFM, kind of a whole separate issue. But now Carl Lawson doesn't have to be the one whole guy. And in totality, the resources we've invested into the defensive line could come to fruition. They could. So I think it's important to manage our expectations 
to have a more positive relationship with our players. I hope to be wrong. I hope Carl Lawson gets 12 sacks. I hope Corey Davis gets 12 touchdowns this year. I just don't know if there's evidence to suggest that, but that's fine because they're two really damn good football players and two really damn good human beings. And I'm glad they're on this football team. And we'll talk ball soon.